Okay, hello again everyone, I'm, uh, and I'm back with the new topic, which is the module 4 of your lesson. So, for today, we will be discussing the globalization of economic relations. Now, before that, I will just do a recap of the previous three uh, modules that we have studied before. First off, we've studied the introduction to globalization. The second part, or the second module, we studied about the types of market and the market system. And on the third module, we studied the state and the globalization. Now, for um, for today, you know, we will be discussing the globalization of economic relations. Okay. Lights. So... What is economic globalization? When you say economic globalization, it is a historical process, the result of human innovation and technological progress. It refers to increasing integration of econo economies around the world, particularly through the movement of goods and services and cap capital across the borders. Now, the term sometimes also refers to the movement of people, like the labor and knowledge, which is technology. So, kakaroon ng movement, no? that is part of the economic globalization, across international borders. And this is according to the IMF last 20, 2008. Now, the interconnected dimensions of economic globalization. Okay. The globalization of trade goods and services. When a country exports more than imports, it runs a trade, defi uh, trade surplus. When a country imports more than it exports, it runs a trade deficit. So the large trade deficits in the middle and the late 1980s sparked political controversy that still persists today. So the global globalization of financial and capital markets, a country enjoys an absolute advantage over another country in the production of goods if it uses fewer resources to produce that the good that good than the other country does so for example lang no um suppose the uh, country a and country b let's say colombia so south america and brazil produce coffee mostly sila dalawa kasi yung um top kasama sa top 10 coffee producers no but ace climate country ace climate is more suited to, uh, to coffee then it's uh, and its labor is more productive. Country A produces more coffee per acre, salawa, than country B, and uses labor less labor in growing it and bringing it to market. Country A enjoys an absolute advantage over country B in production of coffee. Okay, absolute advantage, absolute advantage in the production of goods enjoyed by one country over another when it uses less fewer resource to produce that goods than the country does. Okay. Trade barriers. Ang trade barriers, um, pwede rin siyang tawagin obstacles to trade. No? O malaking hadlang sa trade. It takes in many forms. No? Gaya na, um, yung tatlong common na trade barriers are tariff, export, subsidies, and Export subsidies and quotas. So, yung tatlong yun. So, unahin natin yung tariff o yung taripa sa Filipino. So, the average tariff on imports into United States is less than 0.5%. Certain pro uh, protective items have much higher tariff. For example, in 2009, former President Barack Obama of the United States imposed a tariff ng 35% sa gulong na in-import nila galing China. Okay. Export subsidies. It is a government payment made to domestic firms to encourage exports that can also be act as trade barriers. Then you have quota. A quota is a limit on the quantity of imports. Quotas can be mandatory or voluntary and may be legislated or negotiated with foreign governments. For example, nagaangkat tayo ng mga items from abroad, no? yung mga imports. Pero, we only need 
this kind of amount. So that is the quota. Yun lang, hindi pwede mag-exceed. No? Kasi once you nag-exceed yan, this will cause a surplus. And the globalization of technology and communication. Capital is not the only factor of production required to produce output. Labor is equally important. Siyempre kung walang puhunan, kailan, bukod pa sa puhunan, you have also the labor. No? To be productive, the workforce must be healthy. Kailangan healthy. No? Um, may benefits, lahat. Health is not the only the issue, but the basic literacy as as well as a specialized training in farm management. For example, uh, it can yield high returns to, the, to both the individual. Now, the globalization of production. Production is the process of which inputs are combined and transformed into outputs. Production technology relates inputs and out to outputs. Specific quantity of inputs are needed to produce any given service or good. Most outputs can be produced by a number of different techniques. In choosing the most appropriate technology, firms choose the one that maximizes the cost of production. For a firm, an econ economy with a plentiful su supply of inexpensive labor but not much capital, the optimal method of production will involve labor-intensive technique. So, sa production kasi, hindi lang naman yan isang factory lang, no? Sometimes, they distribute it anywhere around the world. Say, for example, um, during the first um, discussion, sa module 1, uh, we have discussed that, uh, kwari, no? Kwari lang. Yung certain car company will have its factory on, let's say, Japan. But then, it has many factories outside Japan for production only of a certain part. No? And then, ibabalik yun sa Japan for production naman ng mismong kotse. Now, Dickens distinguished economic globalization from internationalization by stating that the, the former is functional and integration between internationally dispersed activities while the latter is about extension of economic activities of nation states across borders. Hence, economic globalization is more on qualitative change. Now, uh, let's talk about the World Trade Organization and the GATT. Now, on our previous discussion, sa module 3, we have discussed um, the um, organizations, international organizations that help contribute with the globalization. And one of them is part of the World Bank Group, which is the World Trade Organization. And also, we will discuss about the General Agreement on tar Tariffs and Trades, which is the GATT. Now, the General Agreement on Tariff and Trade, it was established in 1970. Uh, on 1974, with 23 nations established on the three principles. Una, equal and discriminatory trade treatment for all member nations. Pangalawa, the reduction of tariff by multilateral negotiations. Pangatlo, the elimination of import quotas. And then of course, you know, World Trade Organization, this is just a review. It regulates international trade. It deals with the rule of the trade between nations and ensure trade will flow smoothly, predictably, and freely as possible. And it also acts as forum in negotiations in trade agreements. Preferential trade agreement. In addition to multilateral initiative of GATT, countries in each of the world's region are seeking to lower barriers to trade within their regions. Historically, when, country and, when countries entered into preference agreement, they notified GATT. No? Between 1947 and 1992, there were 85 agreements that were notified while 77 new agreements have been added since 1992. Strictly speaking, for a few of the trade agreements fully conform with GATT requirements, although none was disallowed. Only Japan... Hong Kong and South Korea are among the World Trade Organization members have not signed the preferential trade agreements. Then you have the free trade areas. A free trade area man, is formed when two or more countries agreed to abolish all internal barriers 
kaya nung nabanggit ko rin kanina, yung mga barriers to trade among themselves. Countries that belong to a free, uh, that belong the free trade area can do and maintain independent trade policies with respect to non-FTA countries. A system of certificates of origin is used to avoid trade diversions in, uh, is in favor of low tariff numbers. Then you have the customs union. A customs union represents the logical evolution of a free trade area. In addition to eliminating internal barriers to trade, members of a customs union have established common external barriers. Noong January 1, 1996, yung European Union at ang Turkey kasi nag-initiate nag -initiate sila ng customs union para ma-boost yung two-way trade above the currency, current uh, annual level ng 20 billion US dollars. Now, the arrangement called for elimination of tariff averaging 14% that added 1.5 billion dollars each year to the cost of the European goods imported by Turkey. Then you have the common market. A common market is the next step in the spectrum of economic integration. In addition to the removal of internal barriers to trade and the establishment of the common external barriers, the common market allows for free movement of factors of production including labor, capital, and information. Now let's now go to the trade agreements and unions. Now first, well, the first one is the North American Free Trade Agreement or yung NAFTA. The North American Free Trade Agreement signed by Canada, Mexico, and the United States creating a trilateral trade bloc in North America. It came into force on January 1, 1994. And it superseded the 1988 Canada-United States Free Trade Agreement between U.S. and Canada and is set to be replaced by 2018 United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement. Then you have the Andean Community. The Andean Community was also a trade agreement okay, or customs union, I should say. Na, na, it comprises some um, uh, South American countries like Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. The trade block was called the Andean Pact until 1996 and came to existence when the Cartagena Agreement was signed in 1969 in, and its headquarters are in Lima, Peru. Then you have the Mercosur. Now, the Mercosur, officially Southern Common Market, is a South American trade bloc established by the Treaty of Asuncion in 1991 and Protocols of Auro, Oro Puerto in 1994. Its full members are Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Venezuela. But then, Venezuela is a full member, pero it has been suspended since December 1, 2016. Associate countries are Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Guyana, Peru, and Suriname. Observer countries are New Zealand and Mexico. Now, their purpose is to promote free trade and the fluid movement of goods, people, and currency. It currently confines itself into a customs union in which there is a free intrazone trade and common trade policies between member countries. Okay. In the Asia Pacific, we have of course the Association of Southeast Asian Nation or ASEAN. Now, commonly ang alam natin sa ASEAN is a geopolitical association. But it also serves as an economic organization ng sampung countries na makikita sa Southeast Asia, which formed on August 9, 8, 1967, in which ang core members niya ay Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand. Since then, medyo dumami na membership nila. It expanded, included Brunei, Burma, or Myanmar, Cambodia, na parang awa nyo na yung mga bata, kawawa, Lao, Vietnam. Now, it aims to include, include accelerating economic growth, social progress, cultural development among its members, protection of regional peace and stability, and opportunities for member countries to discuss difference peacefully. And then, of course, yung European Union. 
Now, they established a single market across the territory of all its members representing 512 million citizens. In 2017, the EU had a combined GDP of 21 trillion international dollars, a 17% of the global gross domestic product by purchasing power parity or PPP. As a political entity, the European Union is represented in the World Trade Organization. And sa Middle East naman, you have the Gulf Cooperation Council. Now, it's a common market that was launched on 2000, uh, January 8, 1, 2008, with plans to realize fully integrated single market. It is the, uh, the movement of goods and services, however, implementation lag behind after the 2009 financial crisis. The creation of the Customs Union began in 2003 and was completed and fully operational on January 1, 2015. In January 2015, the common market was also further integrated, allowing full equality among GCC citizens to work in, a go um, in the government sector and private sector. Social insurance and retirement coverage, real estate ownership, capital investment, access to education, health and other social services in all member states. Then you have the European Economic Community of Western West African states and the union was established on May 28, 1975 with the signing of the Treaty of Lagos with its stated mission to promote economic integration across the region. A revised version of the treaty was agreed and signed on July 24, 1993 in Cotonou. So considered as one of the pillar uh, of the pillar regional blocks of the continent-wide African Economic Community. The state goal of ECOWAS is to achieve a collective self-sufficiency for its member states by creating a single large trade block by building a full economic trading union. Then you have the SADC or the South African Development Community. So the SADC free, uh, free trade area was established in August 2008 after the implementation of the SADC protocol on on trade in 2000 laid the foundations for its formation. Yung original members niya ay Botswana, Lesotho, Madagascar, Mauritius, Mozambique, Namibia, South Africa, Swaziland, Tanzania, Zambia, Zimbabwe, with Malawi and Sikeles joining later. So out of, of the 15 SADC member states, only Angola and the Democratic Republic of Congo are not, are not yet participating. So the South Sea Customs Union scheduled to be established by 2010 according to South Sea's regional indicative strategic development plan is unlikely to become a reality in the near future. This is because the European Union economic partnership agreement with their inherent extra-regional free trade regimes provided for several South Sea members more benefits than deeper regional markets integration within the framework of South Sea Customs. Then you have the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Products in OPEC. Sila yung largest organization that deals with free trade, especially among the oil. No? So oil reserves. So the formation of OPEC marked a turning point towards national sovereignty over natu nat natural resources and OPEC decisions have come to play a prominent role in the global oil market. And international relations, the effect can be particularly strong when the wars or civil war disorders lead to extended interruptions in supply. So in the 1970 restrictions in the oil production lead to the dramatic rise in oil prices and in the revenue and the wealth of OPEC with long-lasting and far-reaching consequences for the global economy. In the 1980s, OPEC began setting production targets for its member nations, generally when the target are reduced, oil prices increase. This has occurred most recently from the organization's 2008 and 2016 decision to trim over supply. So as you can see in this graph, um, the OPEC has almost 1.1 billion 183 billion. 189 billion, 189 
million ba uh, barrels, almost 1 billion, sabi natin, billion barrels or 79.4% ang shares ng OPEC. Now, ang non-OPEC members ay 300, almost 308.18 billion barrels per, um, which is 20.6%. 20, 20 now, in the next pie graph or pie chart, as you can see, ito yung mga oil producers. If you look closely, Venezuela and Saudi Arabia are the two producers when it comes to oil. Also, in this table right here, if you'd notice, ang pinakamalaking porsyento ay nakuha ng Venezuela with 25.5% which is 302.81 billion barrels and sumunod na Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Libya, UAE, Libya, Nigeria, Al Algeria, Ecuador, Angola, Congo, Gabon, and Equatorial Guinea. So, kung titignan natin, Saudi Arabia and other Middle East nations are earning much when it comes to oil. No? And then you have countries from South America like Venezuela and Ecuador also sharing large portions. All, and another thing is, may kita mo rin dito, some parts of Africa like Nigeria, Nigeria, uh, Nigeria, Libya, Algeria, Angola, Congo, and Gabon, and Equatorial, New Guinea, Equatorial Guinea also have the shares in oil. No? So, sila yung man, eh. ang, oil, ang largest oil reserve can be found in Venezuela. So, mulit lang Saudi Arabia. Okay. Now, let's go to the Bretton Woods system. Now, during the war, um, nag-decide yung Amerika na itipon lahat ng at least 44 allied nations, no? preparing to rebuild the international economic system while World War II still raging, there are at least 730 delegates from all 44 allied nations gathered at the Mount Washington Hotel in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, sa United States, for the United Nations Monetary and Financial Conference, also known as the Bretton Woods Conference. So, Nagkaroon sila ng deliberation for 22 days, July 1 to 22, 1944, and signed the Bretton Woods Agreement on its final day. So, dun pa lang, sa Bretton Woods Agreement, na-establish yung dalawang organization under the World Bank, which is the International Monetary Fund, or the IMF, and the International Bank for the Construction and Development, which is now today a part of the World Bank Group. Now, ano ang naging role ng Pilipinas? Noong December 5, 1945, uh, inappoint ni President Osmeña si Resident Commissioner Carlos P. Romulo ng United Nations, uh, ating Resident Commissioner for the Philippines si Carlos P. Romulo as his representative to accept the Philippine membership sa International Monetary Fund and the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, which bodies conceived at the Bretton Woods Agreement, in which Romulo signed the said membership on December 27, 1945, on behalf sa Philippines. Okay, developing countries and the international trade. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, or UNCTAD, came into being in 1964, that was the first major change in the state of affairs developing nations into international trade as they did not participate actively in the multilateral trade negotiations for a relatively long time. So, some key trade facts. When you say trade deficit, it occurs when imports exceeds exports. So, for example, the United States has a trade deficit in goods. In 2012, U.S. imports of goods exceeded U.S. export of goods by $735 billion. When you say trade surplus, it occurs when exports exceeds imports. Now, the United States has a trade surplus in the services such as air transportation services and financial services. In 2012, U.S. exports of services exceeds U.S. imports of services by $196 billion. 
Canada is the United States' most important trading partner. In 2012, about 20% of the U.S. exported goods were sold to Canadians. Who in turn provided 15% of imported U.S. goods. The United States has a sizable trade deficit with China. In 2012, it was 315 billion and in 2017, it was 375 billion. Medyo lumaki. China yeah, has become a major international trader with an estimated 2.5 trillion of exports in 2012. Other Asian economies including South Korea, Taiwan, and Singapore are also active in international trade. Their combined exports exceed those of France, United Kingdom, and Italy. So international trade links world economies through trade Changes in economic conditions in one place on the globe quickly affects other places. International trade is often at the center of debates over economic policies, both within the United States and internationally. So, how about the trade barriers and export subsidies? Now, let me share with you the, three, uh, the two kinds of tariffs. Of course, the first one is tariff itself, which are excise tax or duties on the dollar value or physical quantities of export goods. While a revenue tariff is usually applied to a product that is not being produ produced domestically, for example, tin, coffee, or bananas in case of the United States. Then, new protective tariff is, an, is implemented to shield domestic producers from foreign competitions. So, these tariffs impede free trade by increasing the prices of imported goods and therefore shifting sales toward domestic producers. So import quota is a limit on the quantities or total values of specific items that are imported in some period. An export subsidy consists of government payments to a domestic product or export goods and is designed to aid the producer. By reducing the production cost, the subsidies enable the domestic firm to charge a lower price and uh, sell more imports in the world market. Okay, last, the McDonaldization of society. Now, have, um, you may wonder, bakit kasama to? Kasi, um, one, McDonald's is, of course, the, one of the world's largest multinational corporation. So, let me discuss with you their process. Okay, the basic organization principle. Efficiency. Ray Kroc, the marketing genius behind McDonald's, set out with one goal. To serve a hamburger, french fries, and milkshake to a customer in 50 seconds or less. Hmm. 50 seconds or less. Sa experience ko sa McDonald's, usually, kung hindi man, ano, kung hindi man 50 seconds sakto or 1 minute sakto, inaabot minsan ng 2 minutes eh. Siguro depende na rin sa product kasi. So, in the restaurant, most customers bus out their own trays. Ayan, so ayan. Sa ibang bansa kasi, like for example sa US, um, hindi, mostly kasi mga customers mismo ang nagbabus out ng mga trays. Hindi yung mga crew. No? Kasi dito sa Pilipinas ang ginagawa yan. Parang gusto lang, uh, kasi dito sa Pilipinas ang ugali ng mga Pilipino kasi basta pagkain, lapag lang dyan, bahala na si crew ang bahala. Pero sa US kasi, uh, mismong customer din ang magbabas out na tray, ilalagay sa isang lalagyan, and then yung mga basura, tatapon nila. So, or better still, drive away from pickup window, taking whatever mess they make with them. Yun. May kasi sa atin dito, iwan na lang. Efficiency is a value virtually without criticism in our society. We tend to think that anything done quickly for that reason alone, good. Okay, calculability. The first McDonald's operating manual declares the weight of a regular raw hamburger is to be 1.6 ounces. Medyo malaki. Its size to be 3.875 inches across and its fat content. Okay, take note sa mga health conscious. 
fat content is 19%. Malagang malaking calorie yan. A slice of cheese weigh exactly half an ounce. And french fries are cut precisely, precisely 9 by 32 of an inch thick. Think about how many objects around the home, the workplace, or on the campus are designed and mass produced uniformly according to a standard plan. Not just our environment, but our life experiences from traveling the nation's most uh, interest to sitting at home viewing television are more now more deliberately planned than ever before. Unity and predictability. An individual can walk into McDonald's restaurant almost anywhere and buys the same sandwiches, drinks, and dessert, uh, desserts prepared in precisely the same way. Uniformity results from high ration, ra rational system that specifies every action and leaves nothing to chance. Now, this reminds me, you know, um, not exactly uniform, pero let's say, sa, did sa Philippines, uniform a product. Pero if you go to the uh, outside of the Philippines, let's say, US, iba ang McDonald's sila doon kaysa McDonald's saan dito. For example, ano ang wala sa McDonald's sa United States sa McDonald's sa Pilipinas? Number one, is rice. Walang rice sa US. Of course, tayo dito kasi rice is rice. Mahilig tayo sa kanin. Kaya uh, in every chicken, of course, there is rice as our meal. Samatalang sa US, wala. No? Another one. Let's talk about the chicken. Total chicken naman talaga. Dito sa atin, sa Pilipinas, ang regular natin is different from the regular chicken in other Southeast Asian neighbors, particularly sa Singapore and Malaysia, or sometimes, or siguro possibly Indonesia. Now, in as they say, iba yung ano eh, yung chicken nila dun eh. Kung sa atin, yung regular natin dito is typically regular talaga. Samantalang, if you go to Malaysia, as they say, yung regular nila dun is just, is equivalent to our hot and spicy dito. Gets nyo? So, kumbaga, yung hot and spicy nila dito, sa atin dito, is regular pa lang sa kanila doon. And yung hot and spicy nila dito, let's say, para ka na rin nakakain ng Korean fried chicken dito na sobrang anghang. Yung super anghang na si... Siguro, double the... Ano? Hotness, o yung pagkaanghang, doble. Sabihin natin, equivalent ng dalawang sining labuyo. So, parang gano'n, no? Yun yung hot and spicy sa kanila. E dito sa atin, hot and spicy natin, yung salagang regular pa lang doon. No? Another one. Speaking of, uh, sa, sa, ano to ah, sa drinks. Okay. Yung large natin dito, was enough for us. ba? And in the United States, if you go to the United States, Yung drink sila doon, especially sa soda, is self-service. No, unlike dito na sineserve na. Although it's self-service then sa US, but their large is different from the large dito. So, ang large natin dito is just a regular doon sa United States. Regular drink pa lang nila yun. Naalala ko yung pinsan ko na galing States. Bumili siya ng ano, uh, sa isang fast food na two large cokes o two large na soda. And then, uh, bumili siya ng ano, muna isang large pa lang pala. Isang large na soda. Nung pagkakita niya, sabi niya sa akin, parang regular pa lang ito doon sa kanila. So, he ordered two large para sa kanya lang yon So, ibig sabihin, yung two large, yung large natin dito, Doblihin mo yun, that would be the large sa US. It's like parang nakainom ka na rin ng at least dalawa uh, family size na soft drinks. Not necessarily 1.5, pagka 1.5, uh, ibang usapan na yun. Okay. Control through automation. Now, the most unreliable element in McDonald's system is the human beings. 
People, after all, have a good and bad days. Sometimes let their minds wander or decide to try something a different way. To minimize the unpredictable human elements, McDonald's has automated their equipments to cook food and to fix them at a fixed temperature for a length of time. Even the cash register at McDonald's is keyed to picture the items so that ringing up customers' orders is as simple as possible. Now, parang ganito yan eh. Um, right now, some branches of McDonald's have this automated ordering system. Um, natry ko yan personally doon sa isang branch malapit sa LRT Hill Puyat or sa Buendia. Um, ano siya eh, parang syempre, touch screen na lang. Ano yung ordering mo? And then, pagkalumas yung resibo, present mo sa counter, kasama na nung ano, then, after ilang minutes, makukuha mo na yung ano, yung bayad. Ay, makukuha mo na yung order mo and then magbayad. Parang ano lang eh, parang sabihin natin ito, iwas pila. Kung baga tatawagin na lang, maglalabas dun yung numbers taas, and then, pagkalabas yung number mo, bigay mo lang yung payment mo, and then, makukuha mo na yung order. Parang ganon. So, very automated na siya. So, that would be it for module 4. Um, all the activities with regards to this module can be found in your module. And also, by the way, um, if you want to know more, please subscribe to my channel and click the notification button, the bell one, for more information. Now, until then, I'll see you next time on my fifth module. And we will discuss naman there about the global corporations. Now, so, until then, I'll see you on the next discussion.